<laughs> Got to warm her up. So after being part of our Christmas decorations here for a couple weeks, it's time to take this girl inside and see what's going on inside. The motor's stuck. Doesn't have a ton of hours on it according to the hour meter. And the pedals agree. Uh, the brake pedal's a little war, but the clutch really isn't war that bad. Um, motor's locked up. It's in pretty straight condition. We're gonna bring her inside and see how bad she is. She's got a flat tire there, but it's old and hard enough that I'm not gonna hurt it. A little low there, but I don't know what is wrong with that. Step one, the hood's off. I gotta find a place to put it yet. Step two, lubricate all the fuel lines with your favorite juice because you basically can't get that one. That one's tough. The, the pressure lines, if you know a guy, you could probably get a hold of the set. They're all loose on the, okay. on the, on the leak off. Well, you need to take this guy apart, which takes two wrenches. You got to take that guy apart. I leave that till you get this. Mm. And then you got to take it off the filter down here so that one doesn't get smacked. Oh, no way. That's scary that that's loose. Um, anyway. It's like somebody tried to fix it, but then didn't. The di main difference I've found so far between this and a 900, this has a tachometer drive to tack cable, you know, up to tack gauge, whereas the other one just had hour meter there on the 900s. Fuel filters are a little different. No decompression lever on this one. Diff lock is added on this one, and the three-point hitch is a little different on this one. Seat's a little better. They actually had pads in the seats. Like these, these, these you don't want to have to go make. No, I don't want to have to make Whitworth banjo fittings. That would not be fun. So we got our fuel lines off. Careful, don't break that. All right, we'll start it together. Um, we got the, the rocker cover off. Mess back there. Oh, that's probably what he's for. Watch, it's going to fall in the hole. Don't let the mud washing fall in the hole because I'd like to not have to do a major on this if I don't have to. But looking at that, I may have to. Um, oh, there's oil residue on everything, which is good. I don't see anything broken. I don't see any metal chunks. I just see some rust. Like that wasn't the best gasket sealing or something. Um, shop back. Don't look too bad. So, cylinder one. Don't look too bad. Cylinder two. I don't know if you can see down in there. But you rock it. And she sloshes. Cylinder three. She's a little dusty. I don't see anything in there. Cylinder four. Doesn't look bad. I see black. Black is good. So. Definitely pulling the head. Definitely. Well. Yeah. We probably should pull the head. It, it kind of had a green look down in there. So it could theoretically be hydrolocked on diesel. But I highly doubt it with the way the rest of this looks. I have had them hydrolock on diesel. So I think next step is we're going to pull the starter off. Bar it over. Let's see if we can bar it over. If not, we're going to pull the head. Um, probably should drain the oil sometime here soon, too. Wouldn't be a bad thing to do. It may have had died at one time, but it might just be orange tang. I don't know. Wow. That's... That's not ideal. So, upon some more disassembly, we took this stuff apart. We see there's no screw in there for your oil flow adjustment. I hope that screw didn't find its way to the camshaft and wreck something. Um, we got a bunch of fuel stuff off. Thermostat's out. It ain't looking so good in there by the fact that it it's, looks like that. Um, I've seen worse stuff. I've seen worse stuff that was running. But just a note, it's going to be dirty in there when we, when we get the sleeves out. Assuming we have to, which I bet we do. All right. Radiator's a little dirty, but the fins aren't all corroded out, so we should be okay. Water, pump. Water pump's the next thing to come off of here, and the generator. Coolant's draining through our wonderful pipe so it doesn't leak all over the floor. That's one thing that I hate about these tractors. The subframe makes it leak everywhere. Because it goes down one hole and it comes out six different ones on the bottom. Well, she ain't gonna run tonight, guys. That one's spinning. <laughs> Three out of four are full. That one, that one's, I mean, I've seen stuff right there. There's, there's, some, there's some liquid in there. Um, the head gasket 
doesn't look compromised anywhere. Ooh. Oh, Yummy. that's not gonna hone. Enchilada well. sauce is not gonna not gonna hone out tonight. Um, I guess head gaskets clapped where he got the pry bar into it, but she was gonna need a, more than a head gasket. What I find really cool, it's got the part number, three and five eighths bore and top all stamped in there. This is the three layer copper cork copper, I believe it is gasket, which is original equipment. Doesn't look like anybody's been into it this far before. Those look mostly straightish. Yeah. See how the deck looks. Yeah, it's not terrible. So the big thing you gotta watch is it is it cracked between the sleeves underneath. That's the big thing. Um, Nate's was not. Mine could be, but it's running still, so probably not. Um. It's amazing the water didn't freeze in there and blow those out like we've had on other engines. Well, we haven't gotten that deep into We it, haven't got so that good. deep yet. Being it's still holding water, it can't be that bad. This one, that's, that's a good question. It is a good question. But again, the likelihood of three of the valves to be open sucking in water is you know, not good odds. So the fourth one probably is not. It actually, the bore on it looks pretty good. Like it hasn't had water in it very long. Um, What's well, out of curiosity? See if it'll spin over now. Yeah, get the starter hole. Because being we have, you know, the water has somewhere to go, it very well could just be sitting on in there, and it was hydrolocked, but I doubt it. No, nah, this is too crunchy. Like, She's probably too crunchy. You need to feel this going. It's worth a shot, though, you know. Nate, you didn't work on that 340 with Aaron and I. It was no, this. It, it was this bad, and it spins over now. But it has not run yet. It has not run yet, but it came apart. And it spins over now. <laughs> so, so engine is supposed to have about two gallons of oil in it. Um, that's a little more than two gallons. He dropped an oil pan bolt in the in the bucket. Welcome to the grease factory. That's straight grease. Uh, that might pass for old gear oil. <laughs> wow. That's that's soup. Oil pan's in good shape. No cracks. Oh. But no. Obviously, or the water wouldn't have come out. <laughs> no, John, you got a rusty crank. How bad? Surface rust or Surface rust? Surface rust, but it could be in the bearings and I can't see. Who needs glow plugs when you have torches? She'll start. This thing was stuck tighter than tight. Today is January 28th. We tore it apart New Year's Eve, right before midnight. We had this thing on fire. We were pounding on it. She's moving. It's moving. Not easy, but but the the juice is rising, Nate. Go back, go the other way. You're overflowing it. <laughs> oh, oh there it goes. There it goes. It's free. Like. I can see clean cylinder wall. It's free. Nah. Nope, not completely free. But we've got room to travel. We can hitch it beside, behind the crop master, pull it, and it'll bust through that or break rings or do something. And at this point, the pistons are wrecked. I mean, you got that. You got that suction. That's half that's an inch of travel, probably, isn't it? Oh, there goes the juice. He's overflowing. Cylinder one's about to overflow. There it goes. Ooh, yeah, it's gonna be back on the floor. Mmm, <laughs> good soup. But there she is, and there's sawdust absolutely everywhere in this engine, so it's gonna come apart. But there, there's the top of a piston. Right where it's supposed to be. Wow. Look at the rotation. It's in gear. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that would probably make it a little easier. A little easier. Like, Sometimes you just gotta let the juice get into it. Oh! oh. Crank pulley. I can crank pulley it now.
That's Not impressive. That's impressive considering we split wood in those cylinders trying to break it free. Yeah, it's not going to hold it yet, but progress has been progress made. has been made, and we can make it do a full revolution tonight if we wanted to. There it is. It's broke loose after 28 days of sitting. Nope, she's tight there. It's got a tight spot, but it's broke free. Now.